In last video of your Spring AI series, we have seen how to use vector search. And in this video, we will try to use same approach to query a JSON file. I would highly recommend to go over our last video before we can get started on this because a lot of basic things that we have implemented in our last videos, we are going to utilize same in this video as well. So as we have seen in the last video, we have to add certain dependency before we can get started with OpenAI. These are the configuration that we can go ahead with. So I have used the project as Maven. This is my Spring Boot version. And after that, I have just given the artifact name Spring AI Vector Search Query JSON. And I'm using this Java version for dependencies. Actually, you can come over here, search for OpenAI. You have to add this. And then there is another dependency. We have to add it to create our endpoint, which is going to be Spring Web. So after that, you can generate project and open it in IntelliJ. Once you open it, uh, you have to add certain things. So in data folder, you can see I have added this bikes.json file. So I will open it over here and it consists information of the bikes. So there is a name, then short description, description, price and tax. So in short description, there is a certain feature of this bike which has been described and then there is a description as well. Our data set is going to be look like this. There are a lot of names on the bike with the description and the price tracks and we would like to query this particular document. To query this particular document, what exactly we need to do? So most of the things that we have covered in last video, it is going to be same in this video as well. First of all, actually we have to create our config folder and in this config folder we are creating this vector store config and under this we are creating a bean and this bean actually we have to create of vector store so you can see like the vector store what i'm utilizing over here is simple vector store which is coming from this ai dot vector store so this simplest vector store is in built of spring ai so we do not have to install anything else but there are like a, other options as well as we have covered in our last video and after that, actually, just to create our vectors from the documents, we have to use embedding client and we have to pass this embedding client to this vector store. And you can see this embedding client is also coming from this AI embedding. And after that, we have to go to our services. We have created a services folder under that we have created a class vector service and we are auto wiring the vector store which we have created. And this is a new thing that we have introduced in this video. We have to create a resource. So this resource, you can see it's it's a normal resource which is a part of Spring framework. And then I have just given this name bike resource. This resource is going to be created on this particular file which we have stored over here. So I'm referring this file using this class path value annotation. And once you have it, then we are going to describe a method query JSON vector. And here first step actually we have to read this JSON file. And this JSON reader which I'm using over here, you can see like this is from AI only. So this is a part of Spring AI. It will help us to, to take this particular JSON file and then convert it into documents. So as we have seen in the last video, if we have to perform any kind of query search, then our data needs to be stored as a document object. So whatever actually data we are trying to, to read, whether it's a JSON text or any other files, first of all, it needs to be converted into document object. And this JSON reader helps us to achieve that for the JSON kind of files. So here you can see if you are using the JSON reader, so first of all, you have to pass your resource, so bike resource. And after that, you can see we are also passing like keys over here. So this keys is coming from this bike dot json only so here we do have a key of name short description description price and tax so same keys actually we are utilizing over here and after that to create a document object i am just calling json reader dot get it will give me the list of document object which i am storing here and as you have seen in our last video also like once you have the document object you have to store it in the vector store and that's how we are adding it and storing it here after that actually we have form our query search so we are utilizing this vector store similar search i'm just refining my query so that's why i'm using search request dot default and here you can see that i'm passing a query and then i want to retrieve only first document or a top document and then at the end i'm returning the result and after that you can see in the controller i have created an endpoint and then i'm utilizing same method what we have covered in our last video to get a response in the text so i'm going ahead with the get content dot to string this is actually what we are trying to do and let me open my postman and let me try 
try to run the query and here you can see like this is going to be my endpoint and after that like we have to pass a query because that is how we are going to pass our questions what i have mentioned like i'm looking for an e-bike which bike would be good for me the reference i'm taking it from bike json so here you can see there are a lot of options like high performance e-bike this is also an e-bike so there are a lot of things which comes under this in the short description and then we do have the some summaries over here yeah so let me try to run this code now yeah so this code is running now so i will go to my postman and here you can see like i'm passing a query and i'm looking for an e-bike which bike would be good for me and then this is my endpoint. and as soon as i'm creating this query as a query params then it is going to be appended over here so let me try to run this and see what response we get as soon as I hit this endpoint, if I go to my IntelliJ, you can see all the text what we have put over here in the bikes.json. It has been converted via embedding. Each and every document is being pushed to vector store and there is a specific document ID for each and everything. So because we do have a lot of lines over here, so it took some time to embed each and everything. And after that, actually, we have got this result in the output. We are getting a lot of things. So the output is basically here so this is a name then the short description and then there is a description also and there are some additional information what we are getting so features and everything so whatever it did behind the scene it just printed out everything over here so specification wheels and there are a lot of things we may not need like all this data in the output we will try to refine it and see like what exactly can be done so let me go to our controller last time actually what we did we are printing this get content or to string and we can see like once we are using this it just giving a lot of data which we may not need as an output in this case what we can do instead of relying on get content so we can just remove it and we can go for get metadata and then we can apply to string now again we will try to run this and see like what output we get so the code is running now let me go ahead and trigger this endpoint again and you can see like this particular sending request is taking time because behind the scene it's trying to insert again all this data as in document id and trying to create a vectors bypassing all this document it completed so let me go to my screen and here you can see like i'm not getting anything because we haven't mentioned anything in the metadata but what we can do we can define our metadata and for that we would go to our vector services so we have to add a specific code over here i have just added it and here you can see and we are utilizing the json metadata generate again you can see like it's a part of spring ai so i will try to import it so i will just import all these things first as you can see in the output we got a lot of information and we want to fine tune it right so suppose like you have a requirement where you do not want like all these fields you are parsing all this field but in the output you do not need all this data so what you can do like like you can define everything in the metadata so that like instead of getting everything you can get a specific fields in the output how actually we can define this metadata so we can utilize this json metadata generator and then actually we have to override a method this generate method and under that like we can just pass a key and where actually it has to map it to here actually we are passing name as a key and short description so what i'm looking for like instead of getting all this data and whatever the output we have got last time i just want like in the output only name and short description so this is what actually i have used over here name short description if you want like you can add additional fields as well using this we can fine tune our output so once you define uh, this metadata generator so here also actually you have to add it so as you can see there are three things one is the resource either you can pass resource and the keys or you can pass the resource the metadata generator and keys so earlier we were using just the resource and the keys but now actually we are trying to introduce the metadata also so i can just add this and now our metadata generator is also added in this json reader so let me try to run this code again and let me try to hit this endpoint now and now you can see in output we have got only two fields so one is short description and one is name so this is how actually you can restrict your output using the metadata and you can just modify it based on application need let me try to pass another query so i'm looking for a road bike let me try to run this and again you can see this time i have got velocity v8 and there is a short description with this 
if you want to add a price tag we can definitely go ahead and add a price tag also we just have to add it in the metadata in this format so we have to just pass price json map dot get and the key what do we have in the json file yeah so you can only utilize these keys what we have and then we can uh, modify our output accordingly you can also pass your json file and try to read it via this program everything else is going to be same you just have to modify your keys over here and here whatever you want in the output and it should work for your use cases as well and uh, that's all for this video thank you for watching